Coming up, we'll talk High Limit's new announcer and their sixth driver. Plus, I snuck into Brandon Shepard test, hunt the front's new schedule, and a lot more. Let's go. It's Wednesday, December 6th. I'm Justin Fiedler. This is Dirt Tracker Daily. We'll kick the show uh, off today with a few Dirt late model topics from the last few days. First, the Word of Outlaws late model series has gained another full-timer for next season and in addition to the rookie class. Announced yesterday, past USMTS champion Dustin Sorensen has decided to make the leap for 2024. He spent this past year driving the MB Customs house car, uh, taking that ride over from the retiring Jimmy Mars. But along with this move to full-time outlaw competition, Sorensen will be departing that team and instead going on the road uh, with his dad, Mike, armed with a couple of Longhorn chassis. They'll get their season started at Vado in January for the Wild West shootout before heading to Florida for the first outlaw races. Sorensen joins Max McLaughlin as an outlaw rookie for 2024 and a total field that already includes names like Nick Hoffman, Todd Cooney, Ryan Gustin, Bobby Pierce, and others. And if you're keeping score at home, Ricky Thornton Jr. has now shared both National Series schedules to his Facebook account. Uh, you know, we talked about that a few weeks ago when he shared the Outlaw one, but he's also shared the Lucas one. So we'll see what happens there with RTJ as well. On the flip side of that Sorensen departure from MB Customs, that team will have Jimmy Marr's son Sam in the seat going forward. They'll also head to the Wild West shootout in January before running a 40-ish race schedule around the Midwest next season. The 19-year-old Sam was the 2021 Wissota Wisconsin late model champion. If you haven't seen it yet, I spent the afternoon on Tuesday at Millbridge Speedway where Brandon Shepard was shaking down his car in advance of the Gateway Dirt Nationals coming up next week. It was the first time a super late model had ever been on the track at Millbridge and a very cool experience to watch B. Shep and Randall Edwards, Kevin Rumley and all their guys work through the day. I've shared a few photos on the Dirt Tracker Facebook and Instagram accounts, and there is about a three and a half minute uh, kind of behind the scenes video uh, on the YouTube channel with a bunch of footage from uh, from the couple of hours I was there. Big thanks to Kevin Rumley, Millbridge, Longhorn, and everybody involved for letting me come hang out. Back on Monday, the Hunt the Front Super Dirt Series released their schedule for season two of Southeastern Late Model Action. They've got 25 races across 15 weekends, $150,000 point fund, and 50 grand to the champion. They'll go from the middle of March at the Talladega Short Track to early November at East Alabama and cover a lot of states and tracks along the way. All Saturday races, at least 15,000 to win and 1,000 to start, and there are several uh, much larger paydays in there as well. Josh Putnam was the series champion during the inaugural season, and this schedule is a significant ramping up of both races and available money. I believe they had seven teams run the whole year in 2023, but with the amount of money they've added, I would not be surprised to see more sign on for next year. You can see the full slate over at htfseries.com. On the sprint car side of things, uh, announcements continue to come quick, and yesterday was filled with plenty. High Limit on Tuesday filled a scheduled TBA. They hired a series announcer and added another full-time team. Schedule addition was Southern Oklahoma Speedway being added on Friday, April 19th. That's in between existing dates that were already on the schedule at Red Dirt Raceway and Salina Highbanks. And the weeks-long saga to find the official voice of the series ended yesterday with the hiring of Chase Rodman to be in the booth for the first full season of national touring action. Rodman moves over from pit reporting on Dirt Vision with the World of Outlaws and becomes the fourth WRG defection to high limit. This was the other move I was referring to on yesterday's show, and as you might have guessed, it was released just a few minutes after my show was published on Tuesday. I like this decision for Chase. He's done a very nice job on the mic the past few seasons. That includes both pit reporting and some booth work, along with other content you've seen him on Dirt Vision. This is going to be a significant step up for him that he's no doubt earned over the last couple of years. Dervision was quick to name his replacement yesterday as well with Connor Wade taking the pit reporting duties for the World of Outlaws going into next year. Connor's a voice we've heard in a lot of places in recent years, including at the Chili Bowl. He did stuff uh, on Mav TV with the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series and most recently across various series on Dervision. He's very capable. He and Johnny should be able to hit the ground running no problems uh, at Volusia. As for the driver announcement, Jeremy Elliott reported that Brenham Crouch will be the sixth full-timer next season with High Limit, joining Brad Sweet, Jacob Allen, Casey Kane, Zeb Wise, and Corey Eliason. Crouch was the 2023 IRA champion. He made 49 total 410 starts this past year uh, around the country. That included appearances with the Outlaws, uh, High Limit, and All-Stars. Uh, just 18, Crouch is the least experienced driver to make the move so far to high limit, and he'll face tough fields all year. He told Jeremy, though, that his expectations are to be competitive and win races. He did acknowledge also the need to continue learning and building team chemistry. 
Still no word or real chatter about who could take over the Crouch Motorsports 11 car alongside Brenham next year. That team has been uh, without a driver since Corey Eliason was released late in the year. We've heard some various names at different points, but seems like that uh, rumor mill for that car has gone, uh, kind of gone cold here. So I'm not sure what's happening with that one. And sprint car driver moves haven't been just limited to national tours this week. Back on Monday, Sandvig Motorsports hired J.J. Hickel to drive their number seven cars in 2024 across the Midwest. Hickel comes to Sandvig after losing his ride with the Home Pro 50YR team at the end of the season. Uh, that group decided to scale back and Hickel was left without a ride. Brooke Tattnall, Linton Jeffrey, Ian Madsen all drove the Sandvig ride at various points in 2023. It's a car you can often find at places like Q-Sits, Knoxville, Jackson, and it does even do a little traveling uh, from time to time as well. In central Pennsylvania, the Zemco car will continue next year with a new driver. After ending uh, the season with Hunter Schoenberg in the seat, Jeremy Elliott reported that John and Pee Wee Zemidas have hired Chase Dietz to drive the famous 1Z full, uh, full-time at Port Royal in 2024. Dietz had three wins in 35 starts in his own car in 2023. That was mostly around Lincoln Speedway. Running at Port Royal will be a bit uh, of new territory for Dietz, uh, who doesn't have a ton of starts there. He does plan, though, on continuing to campaign his own car in between running for Zemco. Still possibly 35 races uh, at the other area tracks like Williams Grove and Baps. Uh, obviously, you probably won't see him at Lincoln a ton because Lincoln and, uh, William, or, uh, Lincoln and Port Royal run up against each other on Saturdays. And in Indiana, the new Maverick Wing Sprint Series has their full schedule set for the inaugural season. They'll run 12 races from April 12th to October 4th. They've got stops at Bloomington, Terre Haute, Lincoln Park, Hobstadt, and Red Hill in Illinois mixed in. In there, uh, as well as the previous, uh, previously announced Maverick Mayhem Week, that uh, will have four co-sanctioned IRA shows uh, June 20th through the 23rd. Uh, the best way at the moment to keep up with the Maverick Wing Sprint Series is via their Facebook page. No website yet. I don't think I've seen a Twitter account either. So check out that Facebook page. That's the best way to keep up with them. Uh, around the other dirt racing podcasts this week, Passing Points has Zeb Wise. Dirt Tracks and Rib Racks has Wes Irwin. Hoagie's Garage has Rod Henderson and Chet Christner. And there are new episodes of The Dirt Reporters, The Dirt Nerds, Dirt Track Confessions, and Doonwich on Dirt. To see all of the shows, all of the episodes, maybe discover something new, head over to dirttracker.com slash podcast. Uh, if you have a show or know of a show that I don't have included in here, uh, certainly feel free to reach out. Let me know. Email, DMs, things like that are all open. Uh, obviously, want to keep that page as up to date and current as possible. Uh, that's it for the daily show today. I am heading to PRI in Indy tomorrow for the day, but I do still plan on having a Thursday show. I'll probably record it late tonight. I'll have it ready to post tomorrow with anything that breaks uh, through the day today, which sounds like uh, there are a couple more announcements coming that uh, could surprise a few people. So uh, stick around for that. We'll definitely have a Thursday show. And then I'm bringing a bunch of camera gear and things. We'll hopefully have a little content from PRI maybe over the weekend as well. So stay tuned for that. I hope you guys have a great Wednesday out there. We'll see you right back here tomorrow.